We're helping you. Why are you trying to make it hard to do this? <laughs> and God taught us a valuable lesson through all that. And, and, and you're right. We were we were trying to help the community. And every because I tried to find the the crux of the problem. Well, who? Where was it? The crux. I got that from you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find the root of it. Who? Who is? Who is? Who is doing this? And everybody come to. No, it's not me. It's them. No, it's not me. It's her. No, it's not me. It's him. So I. I but the Lord was teaching us through that that we have got to be persistent in everything, in every facet of life. You're going to find hurdles. You're going to find things that you have got to work through. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep pursuing. Keep going after it because God will make a way. He'll give you an ally. He, he, he is. Up and, man, it got easy after that. It happens. Some people don't even realize why they're fighting against you. They have no idea. You know, they really don't. You know, they call it in... A lot of people you'll find they'll call themselves believers, but then they, you know, they're coming against what you're doing. You're like, man, I'm doing this for the Lord, and uh, they have no idea why they're why they're being used in the way they are. Why they're so angry with you? You know, you're just trying to work the Lord. They don't they don't even realize, and that's all right. You know, God has called us to be persistent, and no matter the church has always faced opposition. When you're really working for the Lord, you face opposition. I had a conversation. I know we're not talking about this, but I have a conversation with her our youth leader the other day, and I asked him this question. I said, who do you have in your youth group right now that could start a revival in their school? And he's like, uh, <laughs> and I said, that's who you need to be producing. That's the disciples you need to be creating because we need to be equipping people, to, and you said it, that to go out into this world because that's where souls are touched. We, we, so many times, you know, we think pastor needs to invite these people to church. We need to get them into the, out there, outside the walls of the church. That's where ministry is done. That's where discipling takes place. Mm -hmm. And I was telling our youth leader, I said, man, you, you've got to, in these kids, create a revival, a, such a revival in their soul that they bring it back to their schools and they bring it back to their homes. And then I was telling him about a young man that would preach the gospel at their high school. And I said, people still talk about it today. And I said, Brother Joey, I said, do you have a Brother Joey in your youth group? And he said, I don't know. And I said, you have got, have got to get that in them, that the power of the Holy Ghost is so stirred in them that they bring it to their schools. And that's in every facet of ministry. We just want to see people get on fire for the Lord. And we want to facilitate that. If you want to... If you want to hand out bags of groceries, whatever your desire for ministry is, we want to facilitate that. Amen. You said it earlier, you were talking to my, and it made me think about it. But when you say the word ministry, it, it immediately highlights the platform. Mm -hmm. You say ministry and people get all like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> I can't do that ministry, you know. <laughs> but, you know, we have, we've taken for granted really the Holy Ghost that's inside of us. And we use it just when we come to church. Like it, it's meant to operate in the church house and during services, during worship. And the, the minister operates, you know, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. But when we leave, like that's it. It's to help us. And we take it for granted as far as we use it to live our best life now and come to church, you know, and, and have a great service and then go out and then what? But really, the Holy Ghost, and if you read in the Bible, you know, even in the book of Acts, throughout all of it, you know, they use the Holy Ghost in their everyday life. It told them, it could tell them if somebody walked in, what to say to them, and whether they were out in public or they were, you know, it didn't matter. That's what it's supposed to be for. So when you say ministry, and I, I stress to people all the time, it's not, it's not the platform. It's not just the platform. It's hospitality. You know, it's, if your ministry is to bake to bake bread and give it out to people, you know, or your people. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> if your ministry is that your ministry, brother Joe is one of them for sure. Uh, but you know, like I take my mother-in-law for instance. You know, she doesn't think she has you know any great gift, That's but she's funny. one of the sweetest people I know, and she'll open up her home. And I tell people, if that's if hospitality is your ministry, that is that is a ministry. You make Amen. people feel welcome and loved. I can't tell you the times we've gone into a place and and it, it wasn't a great ministry. But I, well, I'll say we went to Mississippi and stayed at uh, the Stafford's mm -hmm. church, mm -hmm. and just the love that they poured into just the accommodations we stayed in, they yes. you know made us feel welcome and like they really cared. And that is such a strong ministry. People take those things they don't even think about it, you know. But if if you just tell somebody, you know. Going to the grocery store and you're like, with a cashier, you're like, you're, you know, you're very nice. Or you have a nice smile, or you know, something like that. 
It's ministry because you're showing the love of Christ. Most of the time we're in a hurry. This whole world's in a hurry. We don't got time to say anything positive to somebody yeah. we're just meeting. So, man, ministry is is not just a platform. That's no. You said it earlier, just a small spot. Yeah, that's there, there needs to be an emphasis put on being spirit-led. Mm -hmm. I was preaching when you was out of town. The importance of being spirit-led. The Holy Ghost, th thank God we have it, and thank God we get all those little fringe benefits. Like you said, the, the wonderful feeling it gives you and it mm -hmm. evokes. But God is so much more than that. It, it, it's a leader and a guide. It said it will, you know, it will lead us and guide us into all truth. It, mm -hmm. That's that's what it's for, and whether that truth be how to treat this person, you know, mm -hmm. how to minister to this person mm -hmm. today. Um, should I go to this place? And we've heard mm -hmm. so many stories about people that got to get in the car and drive that away. Yeah. Or where? Well, I'll just tell you to drive and. Just something miraculous happened just because someone just dare obey the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, and it goes back to what you're saying. It's all about the value of being spirit led. And if we would do that in our lives, we, God, there'd be so much less trouble and stress yes. in our life. You know, if, you know, God, y'all being pastors, you know, it seemed like, you know, a church where oftentimes there's hills and valleys where you got troubles, let's say, or, and most of the time it's people's. Feelings. And really, there's a lot of time no bad guy or good guy in a situation. It's just people's emotions get involved, and then well, the next thing, your pride gets involved. And next thing you know, you have a church split when really, if someone would have just said, I'm going to be spirit led, I'm just going to love. Love. One of the men said uh, this morning on the Marco Polo group, um, don't let anybody get under your skin today, or, you know, mm -hmm. or you know, however he said it. And, um, you know, the, the trick is just love God. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, beloved, let us love one another. Yes. And if, we'll just, if we'll start with that, that's a good start. You, know, you just can't finish it there. Just stay there and just, because you can start there and just say it over and over. And eventually you'll probably, <laughs> somebody get under your skin. You get to be proactive with your love, mm -hmm. okay? But, um, <laughs> and, and be obedient to the Spirit. But it's imperative to all of us to be Spirit-led. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier um, about uh, the people who are listening and about giving and stuff. Be spirit led in your giving. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, you addressed it earlier. People want to put their money into something that's being beneficial and being a blessing. And oftentimes, folks have done that, and they've been hurt because they found out that there was a lot going on with the money that they probably didn't want to. And the point I'm making is this: if you've been spirit led, just really prayerful about where your finances go, you probably would have put it someplace to doing a little bit mm -hmm. more of a, a serious work for God. So definitely if you find a place you want to minister folks and support, support this ministry. Matter of fact, we'll put up a, a thing at the end of it. So stay tuned to the end to find out how to bless this ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see that because there's a difference being made. Um, like we addressed earlier, the Fusion Connect, uh, Brother Alan Harrell, who's been a guest on this uh, podcast, him and his wife, I have opened it up downtown. So that's a ministry that's going forth from this mm -hmm. um, church. Uh, if there's a revival in the area and Brother Daryl feels led to go, man, he'll pack up these ladies and he'll go to a revival in another state and show these people what God is doing. So if you want to be part of something like that, I'm sure y'all would appreciate that. Yeah. Right? Yes, <laughs> yes. And if you pastor a church and you want us to come, mm -hmm. we'll load up a van and come and be with you. And I think you'll be quite surprised in the reaction of these girls when they worship the Lord. So, oh, yeah, and that's that. the thing that amazes me. I've seen it. Every place that we've been, it's like the people are blown away by the change in these ladies' lives. And it inspires them. And I guarantee you probably every place you've taken them. I know every place that I've been with um, y'all and the ladies in the service, the pastors have said they have blessed me, I think, more than we've blessed them. That's a, mir a miracle. That's, mm -hmm. These people were just on dope a few months ago mm -hmm. and doing hellish things, but there's been such a change in their life. Thank God I is using them to yeah, brother, bringing hope back and hope back to the church. Mm -hmm. It's bringing hope. hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, the coolest thing we went to Norristown and uh, took a couple of the girls with. I think it was last year, mm -hmm. and um, we didn't say anything. We we didn't even tell the pastor. I think that we had a couple of the recovery girls with us. And um, and when we got there, we didn't say a word. Nobody even said anything during the whole revival. And it wasn't until um, one of the ladies got there and testified. She was close to graduating. 
that she started talking about being in the program. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was like, what? Oh my gosh, I had no idea <laughs> you know, that you were in a drug program. And it blew their mind because there had been such a change. They didn't even see it. And my, the coolest thing when we talk about it, I tell them all the time when I get a chance to tell them about, you know, the three Hebrew children that were thrown in the fire. And when they come out, you know, the only thing that was burned was their, the things that kept them bound. And there was no hint of smoke. Right, As in the God will deliver you. And there's, no, there's not even a hint of smoke. There's not a hint of the world, you know. And that was, that's one of the coolest things to see. Um, thank God for that. How many, how many um, girls can we house here right now? Twelve. Mm -hmm. Twelve. And you, you could, if, if you had to be silly, you'd probably have way more, couldn't you? Well, the idea, the idea is to have forty. <laughs> forty is the number we're shooting for. See, Amen. And uh, I say that because, again, kind of making an appeal to people that are listening. If you have means, support the ministry. I mean, we've. And here's the thing: we know little as much of God is in it. You've proven that in this, you know. But the Bible did say that if you've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you a ruler of many things. Mm -hmm. And this church has been faithful. This mission has been faithful. But I, I know your heart is why I'm bringing this up, that you, you know, guys, you want to reach so many more. As, there's never enough. You want to reach more. You want to reach more. You want to reach more. Because as everybody that hears this and any the people that aren't even listening to this, one thing that we know in our country, at least, and I'm sure it's just way around the world, that there is a problem. I mean, God, it was part of a presidential campaign um, four years ago and eight years ago about the opioid epidemic in the United States and uh, heard so many testimonies uh, mothers from New Hampshire um, mothers from other states weeping talking about how that these drugs flown from all over from foreign countries you know south of us and within you know the, the the pill mills and the doctor shopping and whatnot that a lot of these young people they're dying way before their time because of that bondage and my question to everybody would be what what would have happened in this folks' life if there would have been a fusion recovery center with the love of God that was willing to reach out to them and help them find the victory, like you said, not just over the drugs, but over the thing that was causing them to turn to drugs. Mm -hmm. Amen. The real, he the real healing. Amen, brother. All right, we're fixing for Brother Daryl and Sister Rachel. Pray us out. But I just want to say again, um, if you're listening to this, pray about it. Pray about the work that's happening here. And... Let God speak to you and obey it and watch what God does. Amen. 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 Let us out, man. How's it? Father, we love you today, God. I thank you so much for Brother Jolie, God, God, this, God, this work. God, this touching thousands, Lord. I, I pray that you just let the anointing to flow. God, as people tune into this podcast, God, that you just begin to deal with their heart. God, you begin to draw them. God, you begin to minister to them. God, I thank you so much for the opportunity to be a part of a ministry, God, that, God, we're driven by souls. We want to see people's lives change, God. Yes, God. That is our passion and our goal, God, is to share your love. And, God, the hope that was given on Calvary, Lord, that, God, that, that I don't have to stay in that place, God. I don't have to uh, carry this burden of this heaviness or this addiction, God, that I can get true deliverance. God, to set free a new creature, God. Uh, God, that we're reminded even in the Scripture, God, that we don't have to be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds. God, and that comes through a relationship with you. God, I pray that as people tune into this, God, if there's people that's struggling with addiction, God, that you just awaken that God placed on the inside of them, Lord. God, that you just begin to pull them. God, and draw them and woo them to you, God. God, I thank you for the opportunity just to work. God, I thank you for the opportunity, God, that God, that we're, we're not much, God. We're just country folks from Bristol, God, but we just love you. God, and we love people, and we want to see yes, broken Jesus. people have a hope and a, and a change in their life. God, bless Brother Joy in this ministry, God, and the lives that will be changed through it. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time on Call of the Cross. God bless. Do you need help with addiction? Call Fusion Women's Recovery at the number on the screen.